You hit publish on your new dashboard, but once it's finished uploading, it takes so long to filter that it's basically unusable. Don't worry about it, we've all been there. Optimizing the performance of a Tableau workbook can be really frustrating, but there is a process that you can follow to make sure that your workbook is performing as well as it can. I'll show you some techniques, but before we dive into Tableau, let's talk a little theory. Workbook performance really comes down to two things. The amount of stuff you have displayed at once, so that's the marks, the sheets, the filters, the parameters, all that sort of thing, and the complexity of the data blends and the calculations that are happening behind the scenes. If you have a lot of complex calculations happening across a bunch of different blended data sources, that's gonna perform much worse than one that doesn't have that. Now, there's also a hierarchy to performance. If the data source is slow, then the desktop workbook is gonna be slow. And if the desktop workbook is gonna be slow, the Tableau server workbook is almost certainly gonna be slow. It's really hard to take a poor performing workbook and make it perform well, because you have to do a lot of restructuring behind the scenes in order to make it efficient. So if you know you're gonna be building a complex workbook, it's worth thinking about performance from the start to make sure that you optimize the data source and the calculations so that it'll perform well once it's finished. If you don't have that luxury though, and you are already working with a workbook that doesn't perform well, there are a few things you can try and you wanna test, test and test. Different things will work for different workbooks and you'll be surprised what uncovers performance in one workbook that you'd written off as not helping because it didn't help elsewhere. So let's go ahead and dive into Tableau. All right, so I've opened up this Tableau workbook. It's just a very basic workbook of some data that I found on Kaggle and it, it actually performs pretty well. So when we click on things, you know, it moves around pretty speedily, but let's imagine for now that it didn't. How could we go about troubleshooting what's causing the slowness and how to fix it? The first thing that you can try is the workbook optimizer. If you go up here under the server menu and notice that I'm running Tableau public, so I'm missing some of the options in these menus. We'll have to imagine they're there, but click on run optimizer and that will bring up this optimize workbook dialog box that checks for a whole bunch of things that can really slow down your workbook. Now you'll see, as I said, this is a pretty simple workbook. So most of the items in here are passed and that's not something we have to worry about, but there is one and that is unused fields. So we have 29 different fields that are in the data that we're not pulling into our dashboards or our views. So if we were to hide those, that would speed up the, uh, speed up the workbook. Now we'll talk more about those in just a second. The other thing you can do is use what's called the performance recorder. Now this doesn't work on Tableau public. It's not an option, but if you go into the help menu and then under settings and performance, there is an option down at the bottom here to start performance recording. That will start the performance recording. You'll click around a bit in your dashboard and then it will deliver you a workbook that you can use to understand what's taking the time, whether it's the queries, the calculations, rendering the views, and that again can give you some idea of where you can start troubleshooting some of the problems with your Tableau workbook. Fundamentally though, there's a few things that you can do to try and fix bad performance. The first thing that you can try and do is you can try and remove data and removing data at the extract or in the data source is much better than filtering it out in the view if you know that you're never going to need it. Um, so if you wanted to do that, you can go into the data source here and you can click on filters up here in the top right hand side and you can click add. That will add filters to the data source. Now you have to bear in mind when you do add these filters, that data is not gonna be available in any view in the workbook. It's gonna be completely removed from the extract and from the data source. But it's a good way of reducing the size of the extract to make a poor performing workbook work a little bit better. The other thing you can do is you can jump in and if you do have filters on some of your sheets, you can move the filters to the context by clicking the down arrow and then add to context. What that does is it forces them to be evaluated before other items are evaluated. So let's take a quick look at Tableau's order of operations so I can show you why that works. So this is the order in which Tableau performs the things to render your workbook. The first thing it does is the extract filters. Those are obviously applied to the extract. The second ones are the data source filters. We talked about both of those. And then the next one is context filters. Context filters are applied before anything else, only after the extract and the data source filters. 
That removes the data from doing anything at all before even the sets or top analysts or anything like that are calculated. So that can dramatically reduce the amount of data that Tableau is working with when it does its calculations and when it renders its views, which can make the workbook a lot faster. Now this is all talking about speeding up the data, but there's a few other things that we can do too with our data source to make sure that it's as fast as possible. You only wanna work with the data that you actually need to do your analysis. You'll see here that I have a bunch of different data sets that I use for different videos and that I use for playing around with. Only pull in the one that you want. If you tried to pull in multiple of these, then the data will be available in the workbook, but if we don't need to use it, it's just taking up space and slowing things down. The other thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure your data source is structured in a way that makes your visualization simple. So you're not restructuring the data on the fly with either items, you know, pivoting the data in the data source, using level of detail calculations, or doing complicated data blends in order to get the views that you want. If you find yourself using those calculations, it's worth exploring whether you can restructure the data at the source, so in the source file or in the data warehouse, rather than trying to do it through Tableau. Tableau's not very efficient at that. Uh, if you're using joins, then turn on referential integrity or assume referential integrity if you're able to. This means that Tableau is not going to include all of the information from the joins unless it needs to in order to render something. That takes the join out of the query to the data source, which makes it a lot faster. If you're using a text file, and I am using a text file here, um, you want to use an extract. Now again, I'm in Tableau Public, so I don't have the option to create an extract, but normally up here in the top right, there's an option to do that. If you click onto a different sheet, you can also go into the data menu and under your data source, there'll be a section in here that allows you to create an extract too. Extracts are optimized for Tableau, so they're gonna perform a lot better than the connection to the raw text file. When you create the extract, you can also hide any fields that aren't being used, and you can do what's called aggregate to visible dimensions. That means that if you have a data source like I do here, where we're only looking at it at the month and day level, but we have data down to the hour level, Tableau will aggregate the data up to the day level instead of pulling through all of that hour level information if you don't need it. Aggregating any additional levels of detail that you have is a really good way of speeding up the workbook and reducing the size that it takes up when you save it. Jumping back into our worksheet here, if you want to hide all of the unused fields quickly, you can click on this down arrow right here and just click hide unused fields. And that dramatically reduced the number of fields that we have because this isn't a very big workbook and we're not using very much data. If you want to unhide them, you can go to show hidden fields and all of these fields that are grayed out are hidden and they're not gonna be pulled through into the extract. So when you go to work on this and you only have the data extract, you're not connected directly to the data source, you may not see these fields because they're not being pulled through into the extract, but they do still exist in the data source. If you connect directly to the data source, you should be able to see them pull up. And if you want to make one pull in, you can right click on it and click on hide, and then it will pop back up and it will be included. The other thing you can do is you can do what's called materializing calculations in the view. Now again, this is something you do with the data extract. So the option will be available in the data extract portion of this uh, data menu. But what that does is that computes the calculations in the data source. Anything that can be computed before the data is pulled in is computed in the data source and not in the workbook. So we've talked quite a bit about data. Let's talk about what you can do to speed up on the dashboards and in the workbook itself. The first thing is that fewer worksheets and fewer things displayed mean a faster and a better performing workbook. So if you have sheets that you're not using, remove the unused sheets, hide the unused fields, delete the unused calculations. The other thing that you wanna do is reduce the number of sheets that you have displayed on a particular dashboard. Now, if we jump into our layout view here, you can see that when we get into it, there's actually quite a few different sheets, even on this relatively simple dashboard. Every one of these layout containers is rendered as a sheet. 
every one of these filters is rendered as a sheet and every one of the sheets with the actual visualizations on them is also rendered as a sheet. So bear in mind, the more things you have displayed on a particular dashboard, the slower it's gonna perform. Now, where I work, we have a lot of filters on the dashboard and having them recompute every time something changes can be really time consuming. So one of the tricks you can use is to go into the filter menu here and down here where it says, all values in database, all values in context are only relevant values. You can select all values in database instead of only relevant values, and then it will render once and it will sit and just keep that list of values. Now, that means that you could accidentally filter for nothing, but sometimes that's a lot easier to deal with and to address with stakeholders than why it takes 30 seconds for the view to render every time they click on an item. You can also jump up here to customize and you can show the apply button so that that means that clicking through here doesn't change anything unless you hit that apply button. That also can reduce some of the frustration that your stakeholders might have trying to click through the dashboard into a filter and finding that every time they change something the whole dashboard is re-rendering and they have to wait. Simple views are fast, so keep the views straightforward. Sometimes the cool visualizations that we see on Tableau Public or that you might see in YouTube videos can look awesome, but behind the scenes there's a lot going on to make them render like that. I remember once having a table in a dashboard that I had built which was actually behind the scenes kind of complicated because it was in the days when it was hard to get icons into tables so it was really a sort of hacky way of doing it and that view in particular looked really simple but it performed really badly and it was really slow because behind the scenes it was having to do a lot of complicated restructuring in order to render. If you can avoid doing things like that and stick with the default Tableau views as much as you can, it's really gonna help your workbook perform up to the way that you expect. Let's dive in now to each individual sheet and see what we can do to make the sheets perform better. Now, calculations. There are a couple of uh, calculations in this workbook somewhere around, I can't find them right now, but calculations perform differently as do different data types depending on what's in the calculation. If you have a row calculation or an aggregate calculation, they scale really well, so you can do a lot with those. Keep the calculations as best you can to the row level or to the aggregate level. If you use window calculations, they're more complex, so they take longer to compute, but generally speaking, because they're only being performed on data that's in the view, window calculations also perform pretty well. Level of detail calculations are much more complicated. Level of detail calculations are create a query to the data source. So if the data source is slow, a level of detail calculation can really bog down a worksheet or dashboard. If you convert them to a table calculation or use a data blend, sometimes that can improve performance. So that's worth exploring if you find that you have a lot of level of detail calculations and your dashboard is performing really badly. In terms of data types, numbers and booleans, so true false values, perform much, much better than text fields. So if you have a lot of text fields, then it's gonna perform worse than if you're able to use numbers. That's worth remembering because if you have something that can be flexible like a one or a zero instead of a yes or a no, converting that in the data source can actually help your Tableau workbook perform quite a bit better. Um, if you have complex calculations, particularly ones that are using strings or anything like that, you know, if you have a lot of case statements or if statements, moving those calculations to the data source can vastly improve performance. So definitely look into doing that if you have the opportunity. Also, if you're adding things to one of these shelves and you get the big warning pop up that says, hey, there's a lot of items. Are you sure you want to add this to this shelf? Do listen to it. That means that all of the items could potentially be rendered if somebody selected the right group of filters. And if you're worried about the way the workbook's performing, that can be really bad and it can be really slow for it to render all of those pieces. Likewise, if you have a lot of marks on a map, when you zoom in, 
that doesn't filter out the marks that you can't see. You're zooming in on a part of the map, but everything that you can't see is still being rendered every time something changes. So if you do want to use a map, make sure that you're keeping the number of marks small. That's a bunch of tips and tricks. Hopefully some of those will help. Definitely recommend diving into some of the things that you can do with the data source and some of the work that you can do with the performance optimizer to make your workbook as quick as possible. Hey, thanks for sticking with me through this video. I hope it's been helpful for you. If it has, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We talk about Tableau, we talk about Power BI, and we talk about how to present with data better. I look forward to seeing you next time.